So this segment is going to be on splitting of the second physiological heart sound. Here's the diagram we're going to be working with. The red represents the left ventricle, the blue represents the right ventricle. The two lines up top are the semilunar valves, the pulmonic and the aortic, respectively. So what happens during systole is that ex the expulsion of blood through these semilunar valves will cause physiological heart sounds when those valves close. And those are picked up by the, uh, see that squiggly line? That's going to represent the sound that you hear when the aortic valve closes. And that blue squiggly line is going to be the sound when the pulmonic valve closes. And they're, they generally close at the same time. Now what happens is when you inspire, there's going to be a phenomenon that you want to hold on to. So when you inspire, you increase negative pressure in your thorax, and that negative pressure uh, acts more on the right ventricle, causing it to expand. Why is that? Because your right ventricle is thinner than your left ventricle, and so it is more subject to the vacuum that's produced by the, in, uh, the negative thoracic pressure when you in, in, inhale, okay? And uh, therefore, you're going to have more blood in your right ventricle, and it's going to take longer to expel that volume. So guess what? The pulmonic valve is going to close second. And that's what that, this delay is. Uh, we refer to that as splitting. So as you can see, the blue squiggly is going to be a little later than the red one, and that's inhalation-induced splitting. And this phenomenon has diagnostic value, particularly with, with respect to left and right bundled branch blocks. So as you can see here, I drew the Hisperkinji system. And what, what, what will happen, let's start with a left bundle branch block right there. So what, this is what we're going to see, or what we're going to hear, rather. So from this diagram, you can see that the aortic valve is going to close relatively later than the pulmonic valve. Okay, And that's because we knocked out the, uh, the bundle branches on the left side, and so the left ventricle isn't going to be as coordinated as the right. And so um, it's going to expel blood, its volume, uh, slower compared to the, to the right. And so that's why you have a delayed closure of the aortic valve. All right? But what happens when you inspire? If you tell the patient to inspire, something's going to happen. All right. So when you inspire, you increase the, the volume in the right ventricle, and you're going to delay, you're going to delay the pulmonic valve closing. And what it does, if the person has left bundle branch block, it actually attenuates the splitting that's naturally caused by the left bundle branch block, right? And so to diagnose this, you have to listen to the heart sound without them breathing in to, to, see, to hear the splitting. And then if you tell them to breathe in and the splitting disappears, then... That is evidence for left bundle branch block. Let's do the other side. That's called paradoxical splitting, by the way. And the reason why it's paradoxical is because splitting, uh, inhalation is supposed to cause splitting, but th in this case, inhalation uh, attenuates it, and that's why it's paradoxical. So for this, let's try the other side now. So if you take the right bundle branch and you block it, then you're going to get a delay of, this, of the, pul the pulmonic valve closing. And uh, the reason why is, again, uh, if you mess up the conduction system of the right ventricle, it's going to expel its, its volume in a less coordinated manner, and it'll take longer to expel. And so the pulmonic valve will close second. And if you inspire, if you tell the patient to inspire, what's gonna, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Well, look. Remember, inspiring increases negative pressure in your thorax, increasing the volume in your left ventricle, delaying the closure of the pulmonic valve. And so the delay that was caused by the right bundle branch block gets worse. It gets exacerbated by the splitting that's induced during inhalation. So that's nice because you have this trick. You can, if you inhale, it will allow you to differentiate or to, to dissociate between these two types of bundle branch blocks. So in summary, okay, yeah, this is called persistent splitting because it's because no matter if you have right bundle branch block or if you inspire, they're going to be split anyway, okay? The splitting isn't attenuated by 
the inspiration. Um, rather, it exacerbates it, so it's persistent. All right, so in summary, uh, that's normal. You see both of the uh, heart sounds on top of each other. And um, if you inhale, the pulmonic valve will close second. And if you have left bundle branch block, all right, the left, the aortic valve will close second because the left ventricle will expel its volume slower. Um, if you breathe during the left bundle branch block, that will attenuate the splitting caused by the left bundle branch block. Let's look at the right side. The right BBB will delay the closing of the pulmonic valve, but then inspiring with the right BBB will actually exacerbate the, uh, the splitting that's called by the, caused by the right bundle branch block. So therefore, inhalation allows you to dissociate between left and right bundle branch blocks. And that inhalation mechanism is going to be important, not just in, uh, in uh, cases of sickness, but also just in normal exercise. When you exercise, you want to increase the volume that the, you want to increase the preload, okay, of the blood in your ventricles, and that's how your body does it.